Hey guys, it's Kat and I'm back today for a foundation wear test. So today I am putting to the test the Hourglass. This is the Vanish Seamless Finish Liquid Foundation. It's their newest foundation. Um, they have their foundation sticks, the Vanish foundation sticks, and they decide to turn it into a liquid foundation. Now, I have had this for a little while. Um, we were sent a PR box from Mecca that had three of them. Haley took one. I took one and then we uh, did a how many pumps um, on the makeup breakup. So I've got a sort of second one that we poured back into the tube. Um, so if you wanted to see how many rough sort of applications you get out of it, that's an interesting video to watch because I personally use a whole pump with this. And when you pump it all out and you see how much pumps you get, you get an idea of how many applications you get. So these foundations aren't cheap by any means. In Australia, they are $86. And in the US, they are $56. So um, yeah, sometimes it's good to know roughly the cost per application and the breakdown, because sometimes uh, you do find the higher end ones if they do last a lot longer and you use less product, they sometimes aren't too bad. But anyway, it's not the point of this video, but I will link that video down below. The point of this video is to see how it wears on my skin. I'm 32, shy, just shy of 33. Um, and I have oily combination skin. Right now my skin is pretty normal. It's a hot day or relatively hot day today. It's gonna to be 28 degrees Celsius. I'm going to aim to wear this for about 12 hours and um, sort of document my process. Um, because I have worn this multiple times. I'm going to say this might be, I don't know, the 12th time I may have worn it. And I'm going to say, um, I, so I like to do these foundation wear tests after I've tried the foundation a few times. So I've got an idea of um, what I think about it. Because if something goes wrong or if one day like it looks particularly good, but other days it looks bad, I like to be able to talk about my experience overall. And I do want to say my experience with this foundation is pretty good. I haven't actually sat down and analyzed it. So I've just worn it and been happy with it. So I'm interested to see if I sit down every few hours and analyze how it looks and where it's breaking down. I can get a good idea of what I think about this, but because it is a warmer day and I will be out and about, um, I can really put it to the test today. Now, before I do show you the application of this, I do want to talk about some of the claims a little bit because I like to see if it delivers on the claims that it offers. So this is saying that it's an instant full coverage with just half a pump. Now, I have tried that before and you will see me try it in this video. I still prefer a pump. I'm just just saying that. But the good thing about this mechanism is if you do want to try half a pump, you can, the mechanism will allow you to control how much product. You can't exactly get half a pump, but you, c you don't have to do a full pump to get the product out. They're saying that no primer is needed. Now this is a big claim from Hourglass because their best selling product is their primer. Um, and that look, I'm wearing this today with no primer. I have worn it with and without. And to, to be honest, the only real difference for me is I feel like if you use a primer that's got a bit of a slip, this actually applies a lot easier and you can use less product. Um, but I haven't analyzed really what it's like with and without primer for longevity. I've always found that this wears pretty well either way. So I think you can wear primer with it if you wanted to. You don't have to if you don't want to but you don't have to wear primer with any foundation. For me, I usually use a primer because I'm trying to use one up. I really don't see much benefit to primers unless it's targeted areas like filling in pores. Now I have heard that the reason they say that is because this sticks better to the skin and lasts longer if you don't have a primer on, but that also depends on the primer you use. If you're using a hydrating slippy sort of found, uh, primer, your foundation is more inclined to wear off faster, but if you're wearing like a grippier, um, long wear primer, then I don't know. So they're saying that it's an innovative weightless formula that applies like a second skin, creating a smooth and flawless complexion. It comes in 32 shades and they're saying it's formulated with light refracting microspheres to blur and create a soft focus complexion, fade proof, uh, for a 24 hour long wear formula lasts all day. So 
Like I said before, I'm not gonna use this for 24 hours. I will wear it for probably a solid 12 hours. Um, but I can tell you, I've got it on now. It looks really, really good in person. It looks good on camera. Um, it does feel quite lightweight for a higher coverage foundation. So I'm not sure about the microspheres that like refract the light and blur your skin. Um, but I do have to say that this is a very uh, flattering looking foundation when you first apply it. It sits well under other makeup and it does feel really comfortable. So I will show you the application, then we'll check in throughout the day and we will see if some of these claims hold up. All right, so it is 9.01 a.m. and I'm gonna apply the foundation. Now I do have two shades with me. So one is natural, which is a bit deeper and one is shell. Um, I have been using shell, but I sort of want to uh, swatch compare both of them. Um, sorry, the lighting's really bad when I film really early in the morning, not really early, 9 a.m. is not really early, but when I film in the morning or any time before say 11, I have like the morning sun come in, so. Anyway, we've got uh, Shell and Natural, I think it was. So I think that one looks like it's more natural for me. This one looks a little bit peachy. So I'm gonna continue with Shell. So like I said in the intro, hopefully, um, they tell you to apply this without a primer and they suggest you use like buffing it in with a brush. Now I do have the Hourglass, oh, there's a cat on the bench. Um, I do have the Hourglass brush that they suggest to go with this. So I haven't actually used this brush before um, while applying it. Um, I've just used like Sigma brushes and other brushes that I have, but I thought for the test, um, I'll use the one that they sort of recommend to go with it. And I'll let you know if it's any different to me using a Sigma or a Morphe or any other sort of buffing brush that I have. All right, so I've used this foundation multiple times and I have always sort of just used a pump, um, but uh, this is, you can actually do half a pump. So you just have to push it down halfway which is that's half a pump. So I never bother doing that, but I'm gonna try with that first and then use the other half if need be. All right, so this is a pretty thick foundation and you can see it is pretty decent coverage. So I'm sort of trying to just smear it around because half a pump is really not much product and you can see already like that's almost dry. So I really don't think half a pump for me, like you can probably do it if you really want to you know, really go at your face, which I don't really want to do. And I've still got this stuff here, which is helping, you know, spreading it out. Sorry if you can't see too much uh, because of the lighting. Hopefully you see enough. Um, I've tried to zoom in a little bit more so you can see it. Um, but yeah, this is how it goes with wear tests. When I start early, I get the morning light and it just looks like shit. But um, I just wanted to point out that this is pretty much dry and my face is almost dry too. Now I don't know if it's because it sets fast, like I don't actually think it does set fast because this small amount of my hand is still wet. Um, I think it's just that this is a very, very thick foundation. So when you do blend it in, um, it's not wet anymore. It's quite, um, so for me, half a pump has done sort of the lower half of my face, but I still have up here to go. But you can at least see the um, difference between, firstly, my skin's not looking the greatest. I've got these little like, red dots for some reason but you can see the difference between the coverage here and no coverage like it does give really good coverage but it doesn't feel heavy because you really buffed it in and worked it in so to finish this there's no way i'm going to get product like it's not on the brush anymore it's not on my hand anymore so um, there is no way i can sort of spread it around further so i'm going to go in with that other half a pump oh that's a full pump Okay, I've got excess now on my hand, which is wasteful. I'm wasting it. All right, one thing I have noticed uh, from applying probably a little bit too much on my forehead compared to my cheeks, um, you do deal with a little bit of streaking um, and I definitely think it feels and looks a lot more natural if you use less and buff it in. I think this does blur the skin in terms of it's high coverage and it's got a bit of matte element going on. Like it's not full matte, but it does settle down to more of a sort of soft touch sort of matte feel. But if you do have areas where it's applied quite thickly, um, you can see it sort of, it looks a little bit cakey. So. I, th I think there's definitely merit to using a buffing brush and blending it out and this applied it very nicely, no different to any other 
sort of buffing brush. But one thing I do like about this is it's quite small, so you can sort of get in areas really well. Um, but you know, you don't need this fancy brush to apply it. So besides a bit of cakiness where I think I applied probably a bit too much, um, I do think this looks really good. It feels still like there's a bit of moisture in there. Like it feels a little bit, a uh, bit tacky, but it looks quite matte on the skin. So I am going to powder this and do the rest of my makeup um, in a minute. Um, but it's got decent coverage. It's not full, full coverage in my opinion. Um, but if you applied more, you would easily get full coverage. I don't want full coverage. I think this amount of coverage, which is a high coverage, um, covers most of my sins. I've got a few breakouts going on. I had some weird dots. I've got a bit of rosacea. So this has covered all of that. And in person, it looks really, really nice. Uh, it doesn't look cakey. It doesn't look like a mask. I do have a hair tickling me. Stop it. So yeah, I'm going to go away, do my makeup. I'll come back and hopefully the lighting is a lot better and I'll show it to you um, after I've done my makeup. All right, so this is my makeup done and on camera especially, the makeup looks really, really good. I did powder it um, with a Cody Airspun, which made it feel quite dry. So um, it went from feeling sort of a little bit, having a little bit of moisture in it to feeling quite dry. So I did go quite heavy handed with the finishing spray just to add a bit more moisture into it. I didn't add any highlighter because I thought I want to check in and um, often highlighter hides the um, sort of oils that have come through. So this is exactly what I want from a foundation. I want it to cover all my sins. I want it to feel comfortable and sort of lighter on the face, which this does. Um, and I want it to, for me, because I've got oily skin, I do like a matte finish because I know my oils do come through and this does, especially powdered, it feels and looks quite matte um, and I really like it. So yeah, I dig it. All right, guys, it is about quarter past one. So this has been on for over four hours now and um, it is looking pretty flawless. Um, the issues, no, there's no real issues. Um, I've been out and about and whenever I catch myself in the mirror, I'm like, that's a good foundation date. It actually looks really good. It doesn't look, once again, doesn't look super cakey. The, the sort of blurring spheres or light refraction microspheres or whatever it, that was, um, I feel like even though I don't look at it close up and go, I'm very blurred. I feel like looking back, I'm like, it's looking pretty good. Um, the oils are starting to come through. I don't know if you can see there is shine. Like I said, I avoided putting highlight on. So any shine coming through is my natural shine. Um, you can see it a little bit on the forehead. So, that, so it's not super, super oil controlling, but it's holding up really well. Around the nose, there is no breakdown. Um, the only thing that I did notice was that there are little indentations from my sunglasses, but in the scheme of things, it's looking really rad. And I feel like I should have touched up my lipstick before I did this. So it's not feeling like it's transferring or sticky or tacky or anything. There is a little bit of, it's probably extra oil breaking through on my chin, but it's actually not breaking down the foundation. The foundation is holding the oil relatively well at this point, And my skin is probably looking better than it ever did does look, which is fantastic. So for our mark, it's looking really, really good. I'm very happy with it. Um, and I will zoom in to show you closer what I'm talking about. All right, so close up, we can see on the forehead, there is shine coming through, but it's not breaking down the makeup. It's just creating a bit of like brightness around the nose. Like it's a little bit patchy on the nose, but I think that's because foundation doesn't really stick to my nose, but there's no like Usually around there where it gets oily, the foundation like totally just breaks apart, but it's not. It's looking really sort of smooth and healthy. You can see the little um, sunglasses marks there, but you know, it is what it is if you wanted to like buff them in or touch them up, but it's really not that noticeable. And I have been wearing my sunglasses quite a bit. So overall, I think this looks really really nice. And I shouldn't be surprised that this is wearing pretty well because like I said in the intro, I have worn this multiple times, but I think the difference is that all on those times that I've worn them, I've never analyzed how it's worn. I've just sort of worn it like you're going to, you know, a family catch up, put your foundation on and then you just live your life. So 
This is the first time I've actually stopped to analyze how things look. Pretty impressed so far. Um, this could take a big downturn. Um, many foundations that don't wear well will start to break down at this point or by this point. Um, but I feel like even the way it's going, even if it does start to break down at like the eight hour mark, it still looks really, really good um, and feels really comfortable. So tick, tick for that. I really like it. All right, it is just after five o'clock. So this has been on for over eight hours. And I have to say it is looking like I just put my foundation on, which is fantastic. So it is looking a little bit dewy. Okay, looks like I've just put on a dewy foundation. Let's be real. It's got the dew factor going on. Um, it's looking a bit shiny, but once again, it's I'm okay with shiny as long as it doesn't break down my makeup. So many foundations that I own um, that claim to be long wearing, um, when my oils start to come through, it actually breaks down the makeup, it goes patchy, it wears away in the center part of my face. My chin generally has no foundation, the, around the nose, no foundation, and I look extra oily. This one's not doing it that at all. It is just the oils are coming through, but it's making it look sort of dewy and healthy, but the makeup is still there. It's still around my nose, surprisingly, um, and it looks really good. It looks like a second skin. Um, definitely, it's starting to give way a little bit on the chin, but everything else is looking intact. One thing I do want to point out though is I think as the oils come through the foundation is slightly oxidizing because I put a little bit on my neck this morning and I'm noticing it's looking a little bit darker than it did before. So uh, it's oxidizing a, sh a smidge, just a smidge. So um, it's still not looking um, like it's not looking orange, it's not looking too dark, it's not looking unnatural on me but it is a reason for me to go for the lighter foundation instead of the slightly deeper foundation that I've got. So uh, yeah, if you're wondering between two shades, probably go the lighter because it might oxidize. I'm gonna turn the brightness on this down a little bit so you can really see the sheen. So hopefully there you can see the sort of dewiness that is coming through with my oily skin, but I still think that looks healthy. I still think it looks nice. Um, I'm really happy with this foundation. What can I say? I also wanted to point out that if I did blot or powder this, um, which I've done no touch-ups at all today, this would probably hold up a lot better, but you can still see if you touch it, it doesn't transfer. Whereas when I did my last foundation check-in, I touched the Becca one and it would leave fingerprints. This one doesn't, it still holds. Uh, it's, it's like a long wearing foundation. It doesn't transfer, which is fantastic. So I'm, I'm really digging this. All right, guys, it's the last check-in. It is 9.10, so it's been on for a good 12 hours. And I have to say, since last check-in, the oil has broken through. So you can see, I, I don't know if I turn this down a lot more, um, you'll be able to see how oily I have become. <laughs> it's a, it's quite a lot oilier than before. So yeah, the oil has broken through uh, by the 12 hour mark. Look, I think this probably happened maybe the 10 hour mark um, and it luckily didn't break down my makeup. Once again, it's starting to break down the chin and you can see it's starting to break down around the nose um, and you can see like it's sort of gathering around the nose a little bit. But overall, it hasn't actually separated on my forehead. It hasn't separated on my cheeks. Um, and it hasn't actually yet separated on my chin. It looks like it's going to, but it's actually stayed intact, which I really, really, really appreciate because at this stage, if I wanted to, I can get some powder and I could just sort of um, blot a little bit of the oil to hide the oiliness. Uh, you can always revive it. I might actually do that now. So I've just got some Cody Airspun here and with a fluffy brush. And if I get a little bit, so if I get a little bit and I start to sort of just powder that down, um, it actually looks all right. So I'll just do this, hang on a sec. So I'm not too sure if you can see, but you can definitely bring back the majority of it from breaking down around the nose and around the chin, um, adding powder to the sort of starting to break down quite oily makeup, makes it look a little bit chunky. So around here, it looks a little bit patchy. 
But overall, you could easily get quite a few extra hours by um, touching up. And of course, if you've got oily skin and before it got to this stage, if you actually blotted the oil away, like I know that if I did that now, I would actually remove the makeup around my nose, but before it gets to the point where you're in oil slick, so maybe at the eight hour mark, if I just blotted some of the oil and then powdered, I think you could definitely have this go for a lot longer. So Look, 24 hours is probably a bit much, but I definitely think you could get a decent, probably 18 hours wear out of this if you touched up. So I think this is a great foundation. I still think it looks really good. So I really like this makeup. I think it's held up really well. Um, this is sort of what I expect um, from a long wearing foundation. Like I don't expect it to be perfect all day long. I do have oily skin, um, so oils do break through. It's inevitable. But if your makeup doesn't actually break down and go patchy and you can just bring it back with a bit of powder or with a bit of blotting, um, I think this is a really, really good foundation. I like the level of coverage. Um, I like how it feels. Even though I don't really know about these like light refracting microspheres, I do think it makes my skin look really healthy and really sort of radiant. Um, I even really liked it once the oil started coming through and it started looking a little bit dewier. I think it's a really nice foundation on my oily skin at least. I don't know how it would go on dry skin. I do think there's a few things to note about it though. So one, it slightly does oxidize like I mentioned before. Also after my last check-in, I was quite oily, but I decided to do like a flash test. So I'll have that on the screen. Um, you can definitely see the foundation in the flash photo. Now I don't usually do flash tests because I don't like flash photography. I avoid it at all costs. So um, I don't often really put my foundations to that test, but um, this is the kind of foundation that I can imagine wanting to wear to an event, to go out, um, you know, a long night. And if you were around flash photography, um, even though this one doesn't look really, really white, so it doesn't flash back really white, it does look like you're wearing makeup. It does look like a face of um, full coverage foundation. So that's something to be um, aware of. Otherwise, I think it does really sort of meet the claims that it makes. Um, it did say that it was supposed to like maintain moisture and I don't know if it did, but it definitely was a lot more comfortable and less sort of dry feeling than many other foundations that I have, especially foundations that are sort of long wearing and matte. Often you find that they do look feel a little bit drying on the skin. So um, yeah, I didn't find that this one to be super drying, but I also didn't find it to be really moisturizing or anything like that, but it was very comfortable. Um, I think the claim about the no primer, look, I think it wears really well without primer. I think it wears well with primer. Um, it's more based on the primer you use and how, what you want from your foundation. So I think that's something that you'd have to play with yourself and experiment, but I don't think it needs a primer to look good, feel good and wear a long time, which is fantastic. Um, I think also the key to this is to use a small amount and buff it in. Um, I have used this with a sponge before, but I think the buffing method works a lot better. Um, you don't need this brush. Let's be real. You can use pretty much any brush. Like I said, this one is quite good because it's smaller, so you can sort of buff around the eyes a bit more and around the nose, but you can use any sort of buffing brush. But I do think a thin amount and a, and a buffing technique works really well for this foundation because if you do apply too much, it can start looking a little bit cakey in areas. Uh, it can look a little bit streaky in areas. So a small amount and buff it in works really, really well. I'm still a bit skeptical of the half pump business. I think for me, I still have to use a pump like I showed before. Um, it's a very thick foundation. So um, unless you want to apply some on your finger and then dot it on your face, um, you might be able to get away with half a pump, but half a pump onto the back of your hand and then going in with your brush like this, um, I couldn't actually get it all around my face with half a pump. So um, that claim, even though it might be true, I still think a pump is going to be pretty standard for most people. But if you did watch the video that we did on um, Beauty News, where we looked at how many pumps are in a bottle, there's a lot of pumps. You're gonna get months and months and months of use out of this, which is fantastic. So uh, even though it's a very expensive foundation, I really like how it looks. I really like how it feels. I really like how it wears. Um, and knowing that I can get 
months and months of use out of it. I think it's worth the money personally. So I would love to know if you've got different type, like a different skin type to me, how you're going with it. Yeah, I really dig this foundation. I think it looks great. After 12 hours and no touch-ups besides just powdering then, I think this has worn super well on me. And it's been a warm day and I've, you know, been out and about and busy and it, it, it hasn't let me down at all, which is fantastic. So this is two thumbs up for me. I, I dig it and I'm definitely wearing it tomorrow because I really enjoy it. So um, well done Hourglass on this foundation. Um, probably one of my new favorite foundations that I've worn in quite some time. Um, if you want something a little bit comparable, but a little bit cheaper, I find the Lancome um, Tint Idol foundation to be a similar sort of uh, look, feel and wear time. This might be a little bit more coverage and you use less of it because it's thicker, but um, I love both these foundations sort of equally. They're, they're really good. All right, guys, hopefully you found that interesting. Um, if you did, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Did I take a thumbnail before? I forgot to do that, didn't I? Shit.